Allora, dicevamo, eh, lunedì 26, sempre alle 9, inizia il secondo modulo eh, sulla costruzione di mappe mentali e l'utilizzo di piattaforme di lavoro a distanza che eh, verrà tenuto da Raffaella Marzolla. Tengo a precisare in italiano per chi ci ascolta da casa. Eh, volevo dirvi questo, i primi tre giorni eh, non sarà necessaria la connessione internet, però eh, essendo mh, dei lavori mh, basati sull'utilizzo di un software che è Mindjet, chi vuole ha la possibilità di portare il suo PC portatile, anche se eh, noi metteremo a disposizione quattro PC per i lavori in gruppo, e, è necessario però scaricare il software di prova che trovate sul sito manjet.com e dovete eh, cliccare su free trial è un software di prova gratuito si scarica senza nessun costo e ha una durata di 30 giorni quindi è più che sufficiente mh, per l'utilizzo nel corso della settimana uh, ora forse lo diciamo all'inizio per... vabbè eh. Abbiamo mandato comunque un'email a tutti i partecipanti con i dettagli per scaricare il software di prova e metteremo l'informazione anche sulla pagina Facebook per chi volesse l'informazione. Ehm, vorrei fare questo ringraziamento all'inizio della mattinata perché il pomeriggio stanchi e provati, forse non avremo la migliore occasione. Uh, io penso che vi siate resi conto della uh, professionalità ed enorme esperienza di Bruno e di quello che ha significato per noi iniziare questo corso con un intervento di questo livello, uh, sia per i contenuti, sia per gli sforzi, poi glielo ripetiamo in inglese, <ride> sia, per gli, sia per gli sforzi che ha fatto nel collaborare con noi, nel mettere a disposizione qualsiasi tipo di supporto di cui avessimo bisogno e che sono sicura continuerà a fare nel corso della nostra vita professionale, eh, nonché è stata un'occasione per mettere alla prova duramente il nostro inglese, visto che ci vogliamo misurare con la progettazione comunitaria. Um, io non so trovare altre parole ma sicur sicuramente troveremo un altro modo per uh, dirti grazie, grazie, grazie uh, really, you, 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 don't, you don't have to because uh, that's me uh, thanking you uh, being here and, and you know sharing with you uh, my little experience and uh, actually uh, hoping that uh, this is just the first tone of the first The first uh, event, the first situation that will be uh, eventually uh, uh, will bring you to this this world, this this uh, European dimension, uh, let's say um, endeavor, endeavor. Okay, so grazie mille. Okay, mentioned yesterday. I don't know about Italy. I shouldn't say that uh, on web streaming, but oh, by the way, uh, buongiorno, buongiorno Raffaella, that I met yesterday on the, online. Raffaella is the person who is going to address the uh, mind map and uh, organization of ideas. Um, <coughs> but uh, the last day of the week at the uh, office where I work, we use, we use it as a transition for the next week and we use it also as a sum up uh, you know uh, reorganizing our ideas and uh, looking at uh, our highway is our highway exactly the way we plan it on the Friday before or not so it's working but it's also a bit um, a day of meeting between groups and between oh buongiorno I didn't see you this morning Uh, it's a meeting also between uh, smaller groups in order to have a final meeting and this final meeting is a non-formal meeting in the afternoon when it's sunny we go out on the coffee so everybody uh, we 12 15 of us on the coffee and we we have a debate uh, 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 in round Uh, and we take profit for, uh, from this moment to, to reorganize our ideas and to structure uh, our... It's basically um, managing the, uh, the project and the activities together. So, 
Today, I, I would take profit. Uh, I will take advantage of uh, to, to address things that I didn't have the chance to to address because you were very active, and I answered to you, so I didn't have the chance to to follow uh, exactly what I've been uh, planning. So I have my change plan in action today. And uh, after that, uh, then we, we, we can organize our morning, maybe um, starting uh, with the, uh, this, this part, for example, is quite, it, it's, it's, uh, it's quite uh, fast and easy. The work plan is a bit more difficult. This I can do this afternoon to relax a bit, but it's, it's important. So we can maybe, yeah, maybe we can do something like, sorry, something like that. Okay, so uh, we have a time machine and we go back to Wednesday. And here by uh, Ian F, you remember that. Uh, oh, it's a little mistake here. The part E of the documentation, I don't know if you can, I can show it here, yeah, it's better. Okay, the part E, impact, dissemination, and exploitation, sustainability. That's the, uh, that's the um, title of this, um, of this part. So on E1, you see the expected impact on the project. Remember the uh, very uh, small things, for, uh, small characters, and even here, you have this underline, okay? Please describe how the target groups, including all, all the little information, remember, is important, including participating institutions, stakeholders. It means, uh, um, technically, if you address a specific uh, group of immigrants, you will also address and consider uh, the stakeholders, the other, other entities, bodies, public, private, whatever, involved also or somehow linked with this target group. These are the stakeholders, okay? So you will explain here how you uh, reach and involve. Involve doesn't mean uh, give the information, they receive the information, oh yeah, you're doing that, great. No, you involve them. You put them in your room with you. You put them to work with you. They, they actively engage. For example, if you have a brainstorming about, um, about uh, a, a specific situation and a, an operational objective on the, the, the project, and you have a brainstorming, a debate, a, a, a citizen panel, you have them with you, and you have them uh, involved in the debate, in the discussion, okay? Um, so what is the change your project will make during the life of the project? And then, just after that, after the project is finished, okay? This, this is sustainability and impact. This is sustainable uh, impact. But here, because there is a beyond, a beyond thing, because there is an after the project is finished thing, there is a, a notion of sustainability. And this is crucial. And this is why uh, I suggested, suggested on the work packages that 
uh, even even if, if not if it's not um, a specific work package, you are you have to think about a development plan. Meaning, after the project is ending, or before it's ending, you have a, a possibility to do something else after that. It can be only a group of partners of the project who which are going to follow. Okay, but think about that. This is important. The dissemination and exploitation strategy. Okay, so how will the dissemination be organized and how will exploitation activities ensure optimal use of the results? So we've been talking about the difference uh, between dissemination and exploitation. Okay, so this is the part where you will uh, explain the uh, buongiorno. Okay, all right, no problem. So here, uh, you know the difference between dissemination, you disseminate, okay, and uh, exploitation, you make it uh, happen also in other places. So people take what you've been doing, you remember? All right? Yeah, dissemination is um, uh, sending information, giving information to people. You can use an ele electronic uh, way of uh, dissemination through uh, websites, through uh, social media, professional, non less professional, Facebook less professional, LinkedIn more professional. You can use uh, also uh, web platforms such as uh, Moodle, uh, such as also uh, the Gmail, uh, Google Drive, where you can share information so people have access. Okay, uh, so people will receive the information, but uh, they, they, they will maybe uh, not be able eventually to apply these ideas or these concepts or these tools in their, uh, buongiorno. People are coming from different places. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, interesting for a telenovela. Who killed the uh, trainer? <laughs> okay, uh, exploitation is uh, um, the fact that you're going to use the tools, you're going to use the concept. So at some point, either uh, people have been, people from different places have been working with you to learn the how-to. They've been trained to use your concept, to use your tool to uh, use all the information that you've been building during your project and then when they go home in their organization they will actually engage the target group which was uh, planned with the project and they will train them, they will, they will do uh, all the actions that will um, lead to the results expected with the, the material of the project. So exploitation is making it happen, it's doing it, okay? Um, yeah, here I think it's, it's okay, just this. Um, after that, you have the sustainability, E3. I don't, I don't know if you remember this Onicom thing that I've been showing to you at the end. There were uh, D3 and E3, yes. So this is the sustainability uh, thing. How will the impact of this project be sustained beyond 
there is a notion of time here beyond, after the project is finished. How will the results be mainstreamed and multiplied in the sector of activity? Mainstreamed means uh, canalized, uh, broadcast, uh, outreach, okay? And uh, multiplied. So, okay, uh, again, I'm using my example. Believe me, I'm not egocentric. But since I did this, uh, tr this workshop in Romania on the MDGs, one thing I do is uh, when, when I have the occasion, the opportunity, uh, in Portugal mainly, but also in different places, I would uh, have uh, an hour or two of conversation with uh, my peers about the MDG. Sometimes people have no clue what it was, what it is, and uh, I give them, uh, I give them uh, let's say, uh, information, and we use non-formal uh, method of, of training, learning, in order, to, uh, in order for me to uh, pass the information. So, and also try, try to, con to, to invite the, the, the trainer, my peers, to also build uh, activities linked to the uh, Millennium Development Goals. Okay? I won't do it right now, but be sure that before the end of the day, I'll show you some things, so maybe you, you would be uh, interested to, to go to and, and to, to check. So this is the part uh, E, okay, the structure, E1, E2, E3, E so let's back, get back to the uh, first part. Expected impact of the project during and after it's, uh, it's uh, finished. Okay, so when you're, talking, when you're uh, thinking about the impact uh, if, uh, topic, you'll think about the target group reached during the project, obviously. So this is the first, this is an important information that you have to put in this part of the, uh, of the uh, application form. Um, the what change. This is something I think I've been um, quite insistent on, the change. Even with the, 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 you remember the example of the project, my opinion, my vote, 0.1% of people were able to, to communicate and to be aware of how to and et cetera. And after the project, 30% of them, of this target group, were uh, capable of uh, acting. Okay, this is a big change. This is a 29.9% change. Okay? So, During the project, you have the who, the target group, and don't, don't forget the, um, the stakeholders. You know, it's not only the people you're addressing, but it's also the stakeholders. Yeah, I mentioned here, uh, on this notion of target group, just be, uh, again, it's a, a bit of a repetition, but uh, when you look at the documents that uh, are available for you to, to build your application, just be sure what you are, um, uh, about the definition of, of the words, okay, target group, what is a target group, how you define it, and all that stuff. Be always aware that you have to check to be sure that you have understood the definitions of things in order to put the, the because sometimes a uh, project fails because we put a very important information and it's very useful, but it's not in the right place. And sometimes it creates create a bit of a confusion. So be sure that if you use, for example, uh, uh, CAT, let's say, just an, an image, CAT, uh, on, the, on, the, um, on the D1, use exactly the same word, CAT, on the D5, exactly the same word cat in a all documents that you're using to build the application you have the same definition okay if you use a different definition each time i mean the evaluators oh, it's actually which target group is it okay yeah sure use the micro maybe antonio if you please <laughs> Uh, 
the target group is always the one that you talked about between 16 and 55 years old, right? No, actually, um, the target group is the precise group of people you are addressing in your project. But of course, of course, because of the definition of this program, your target group have to be adults, will be adults. So always between the 25 and 55 yeah. year old. This is a, if your target group are pupils, you're, you're not in the right program, you would be on the Cominius. All right? So yeah, you have, you have the, when I say target group, you have the definition of the, 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 the let's say, uh, the framework of the program, which defines which kind of uh, activity, which kind of target group, which kind of uh, uh, results, outcomes, you planning to, to do, because this is the program you are in. And then within this uh, logic, within this uh, 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 definition of uh, parameters, you will define a specific target group according to the need that you are addressing, you're tackling, okay? Um, if you were, uh, we, we in, the B, in the project with the bees, we are addressing the, the fact that there is, um, uh, you know, the people are getting old in this region and they, the, 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 the young people are not staying on the rural uh, areas, they're leaving the place, so they are losing the, the know-how of how to deal with this specific production of honey, which is a fantastic honey. So the target group here are the older people that we will be uh, able to, um, to work with, to transmit the, um, the uh, methodology, the experience and all that stuff. These are also the young people we want to retain in these regions to create uh, jobs, to create the production of the, the honey and all that stuff. So it's a different target group, but it's within and by doing that, we also uh, addressing the, at the same time the two objectives of the uh, um, Grundvik program. We we tackling the fact that we have this uh, giving opportunity of learning to the aging population, and we also uh, addressing a learning pathway for adults. Okay, and we answering to a need that is. Um, uh, to avoid the, the, the uh, disparation, the uh, arrangement of this methodology and this. And also we tackling the fact that we are working with biodiversity. So it's quite interesting. There's a very interesting project also uh, by different uh, uh, stakeholders in saving languages. You know, there is a, a, a lot of languages uh, disappearing every, every month. Same kind of things. Okay, the, the target group, the what? Uh, the target group reached after, okay? This is the multiplying effect. Just for you to have an idea of what I mean by multiplying. Can you see there? No, not really. It's okay. Ah, Rafaela, mind uh, Multiplying is you. You have the project, and within the project, this is the project. You have uh, different partners. And they will, they will, let's say there are three countries, okay? They will, the project will bring, for example, I'm in Portugal. We've been designing a training course. So during the project, I'm creating events every month. For example, I go to Coimbra and I have a, an audience and we work together on the project uh, we're building, okay? Eventually, during the project, these people also 
did the same with uh, okay I know it's a bit uh, I'm the only Portuguese here so nobody will be offended with this image of Portugal but this is Lisbon this is uh, Faro the south this is Porto and let's say I with my group go to Porto and also Faro during the project so I'm in the project and I'm going to Porto I'm going to Faro in, in Portugal this is this level and then there is another level that's in Porto the people uh, the, the trainers or the whatever the person the staff that was there were very interested and they also started to use the, uh, the the project during the project in their area yeah This is the beginning, yes, actually it's exploitation. But at the, phase, at the phase of the project, since uh, eventually all the outcomes, all the results, all the uh, evaluation are not ended, it's kind of a pilot testing. This is during the project. This is impact during the project. That's what I mean by, by uh, reaching the target group during the project, okay? So this is... And when the project is ended, is finished, well, exactly the same thing. It's exact thing, exactly the same thing that happened. Okay? The project is ended, so, uh, well, let's say that, um, let's say that it was a TC, a training course. Okay? We are out of the project, I'm in Portugal, and I'm doing exactly the same thing. And these guys are receiving the, the up-to-date information, and they're doing exactly the same thing, but after the project. You must be able to quantitatively prove what you're going to do. Example, you have, um, you have a, a list a list of uh, partners which actually should be already here in this application form the last part it's called sorry Antonio sorry guys list of associated partners where applicable uh, this organization may provide the consortium with facilities or assistance that enhance improve the quality of the work but they may not be responsible for core activities, work packages, uh, of the project. No financial contribution will be uh, given to these people. But be sure that uh, the guys who you want to work with for uh, dissemination and exploitation are here. This is not to be done, like I'm, I'm saying do this. It's a suggestion. Okay, I'm in a project right now, there are more than 100 associated partners because the Chamber of Commerce of uh, Santa Teresa Mallorca, well, they, they, it's a Chamber of Commerce, they invited all the uh, associated organization within the Chamber of Commerce to be associated partner on the uh, skill, uh, so Sector Skill Alliance project, okay? So somehow, when you, you write this uh, part E1, you see, uh, um, we are going to do that in that way, and all the, um, all the uh, activity during the project will be disseminated and will have an impact through the, the associated partner. You're saying it, and you have here the uh, number, the name of the organization, the type of institution. This is concrete, this is real. They can check, they can call, yes.
Yeah, I'm quite sure so, yes, because uh, I don't remember exactly... I don't, I don't remember exactly the, where it's written, but it's, it's on the guidance also. But if, for example, uh, I know that I, re I remember there is a, a part saying that uh, costs linked to the um, activities uh, can be supported by, um, by the project. Exactly. If, if it's, uh, uh, for example, well, um, the, way, the way I've been doing it right now to answer your question, did you un understood the, the question? Yeah? Should you, uh, if you have someone coming from Porto to, to Lisbon, should, you, should he pay his, his cost or? Well, first of all, as a security thing, I go. During the project, I go to them, so my, to my expenses. But um, I'm quite sure that uh, if you have people uh, coming from, uh, from distance to your event, I'm quite sure it can be supported. I'm not sure, but I remember specifically uh, tackling this situation uh, a year ago some. And, uh, Exactly. So they have to be there. So I believe so. Let me just... <laughs> now I'm fighting what I'm I was looking for the other day and I couldn't. Um, let me see that. If I can find it very quickly, it's perfect. In the other costs, I think it's, it's there. Yeah, we'll be on the sixth uh, tab of the budget table. It's there. Bingo. Uh, example of other costs. I was quite sure it was in other costs. Bank charge, blah, blah, blah. Travel and subsistence costs of third parties. Third parties is really wide. So I think hiring a conference halls, production, translation, publishing costs when performed by co-beneficiary, co-beneficiary organization. Another word interesting, co-beneficiary. What does it mean exactly? But I think it's there. And this is um, an EACEA uh, information from 2011, so it's quite ac accurate. Okay. Do you have any question at this point also? No? So this is on. Uh, this would be on other costs. After that, uh, we have. Uh, okay, so all right for the target group reached after. Okay. Dissemination. That's the part E two. So, as I said, uh, first during and then after, okay? Part two, uh, dissemination and exportation strategy. A strategy is a how are you going to do it? So how do you define practically a strategy? I'm planning to go back to be tonto on my own to develop an idea with Synergia. What will be the strategy? Well, in this case, it's not... Um, well, yeah, well, you, you, can, you can put here the uh, result that you're planning to, to have with the strategy, but it's, it's not even, it's not, uh, what I'm saying is not easy to explain a strategy in a practical way. That's what I, 
are trying to, to explain. It's easy to say, hey, I'm planning to do this. And so here, when you, you thinking strategy, you're thinking, how do I explain practically what I'm going to do to disseminate? A simple example. I plan to contact uh, different organization uh, in my area or my country within the project and uh, I will organize um, um, events, conferences in the morning when I will uh, address and explain what I'm doing and in the afternoon I will put in practice with some, some training, some, some methods that we are using in our project development. Well, that's quite good, but then you have to put a bit of meat in this big bone, okay? So what's interesting at this point is to put some dates. This is a way. Remember, you, 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 you imagining, you, ima you, you designing something that you, you are anticipating things. Nobody can, can accuse you, hey, you said that you would do this. But at one point, it would be interesting here to start talking about numbers, dates, um, how many people of the organization or uh, of the, of the uh, participant of the event you're planning to have in front of you. Okay? Before I came, Pia told me you'll have between 15 and 30 people. I knew. You may eventually also have a profile of the persons. Profile, dates, quantity of persons. These are the things you have to put at any point in the application forms. Quantitative things. And, and the time setting. So the, the, the timetable, time setting. If you don't put that, it's a beautiful romance. Everything is beautiful. Oh. No, you put concrete information. You plan a project, it's because you know that you're going to do things. It's not because you think you're doing things. Okay? This is very important. Obviously, this is a, a, um, a part of the information. When you, well, when you, you have the experience with the other people working in project management and you, you, can, you can cross information and you can complete all what I'm saying. But without concrete information, the evaluator have not, do not have a clear notion of what you're going to do. Um, see? How will exploitation activities ensure optimal use of the result? Here you can say, for example, that this is an example. Uh, I will, I will have, uh, I will have with my in, within my training, uh, training, uh, my pilot, pilot testing. I will have specific people attending my pilot uh, testing. I will have trainers. I will have multipliers. I, I will not have. Uh, end user, for example. So part of my audience will be learners, people interested in, in engaging the, the topic, and part of the people will be people working with the training, the preparation, the, the education, the vocational training of people. Okay? It means that these people will be prepared to go on the on on on, on specific uh, 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 training uh, events, salute, and tra transfer. Okay, they they take stock of what they've been learning and they transfer to end users. This is an, an approach. There are many possibilities here, but the golden rules are uh, always a bit the same. Be concrete, be practical, use numbers, use dates, okay? You can, you can perfectly, with 3,000 characters, you can eventually here use a paragraph to explain what is the dissemination plan. Don't be too exhaustive because you have a work package to explain. Remember the G2? 
actually the G1, you will explain, for example, uh, work package number six, dissemination, exploitation. And you have uh, 3,000 character, I think, I'm not sure, uh, to explain exactly what's the purpose, how it's going to be done, the strategy, okay? It's, um, it's a bit kind of a logic. In D1, you, you will explain the aim, specific objectives, and uh, strategy. And at all points, you will do the same. What's the aim of this working package? What's the, the, the outcome? What's the strategy? It's always a bit the same thing in all parts. But then you get narrower and narrower, and you mean more focused in each point, okay? What else uh, should I say here? Let's go back to the, um, so dissemination. Uh, yeah, on, on, let me go back a bit on, dissemination. Well, at this point, uh, dissemination, you will definitely have to use your network. And uh, when I mentioned the other day the um, structured network, it means that uh, when you're in a relation, we have a relation, a professional relation with someone, you want it to be uh, productive. Uh, you will have a win-win situation, we call that. So, you ask something to your partner, your partner will gain something. For example, there are organizations uh, which will be very happy to receive uh, free of charge the information and the training course method and all the training of the method, so they will be able to use them in their uh, uh, organization, okay? So by structured network on dissemination and uh, exploitation, I mean a network of influential and proactive people, okay? I started uh, networking with uh, uh, Pia in, in May, and I was so proactive, I was, able, I was capable maybe to, to be here in May instead of June. I bought my ticket one month before, I forgot. So I was very proactive, she asked me to, yeah. So if you have a contact somewhere, and it's just a contact, it will not be so useful for you to disseminate. Because when you write your, your project, you really want things to happen. So be sure to choose, well, the right partners, obviously, and also to choose the right uh, um, structure, uh, par uh, associated partners to help you on the project. Remember, whatever you write should happen, should happen. Okay, but basically the cost, they must happen. They must be foreseen. If they're not foreseen during the preparation of the project, you will have to, to argue with the EACEA, okay? You can use the social media, LinkedIn. I mentioned that already, so. Oh, and also the business communities are very useful. You go to the chamber of, your, uh, of commerce of your town of, or your region, and you say, well, we have this project, you know, we we want to do this and that, uh, would, you, would you like to be involved, etc. okay? Oh, um, yeah, the marketing, uh, the marketing plan, Miss, um, um, I don't remember her name, hello? Remember me, your name? Christina, Christina, Christina and me, we are already uh, connected on LinkedIn because it might be interesting for me, she's a marketeer, she's a web marketeer, and I think web marketing is crucial on project development because uh, logotype, uh, the way you, you pass your uh, information on your project, all that is, a, is it's selling. It's not, on the bad, it's not a bad thing to say you're selling something, but it's very important for you to consider the marketing part of the project, the marketing of everything, Okay, is important. So I would recommend to, for you to be very careful when you plan your dissemination plan. And 
and the project uh, globally to give it uh, what we call, um, <coughs> in this case, it, it won't be a corporate image, but uh, give it a project image. Okay? People will remember. Even me, sorry. Also, European agencies uh, are uh, very focused on marketing. Also, European and national uh, agencies are focused on marketing of the project because uh, they want uh, the, the biggest uh, designation of the European funding project. I was with the uh, European Training Corps in Toronto about the designation of the European project, and uh, there were uh, national agencies. Uh, Okay, and uh, believe me, the biggest uh, marketeer in all this is the European Commission. For example, you must in your web page refer and use the logo. You must in all communication, all documentation, use the logo. And uh, now it's a surprise. Now we don't know who is coming, but oh, nobody. Okay, maybe I shouldn't. Um... So on the dissemination marketing plan, the logo, the attractiveness, okay, uh, be uh, practical, useful. Um, for example, uh, remember Obama? He work, worked with a lot of volunteers, okay? Volunteers. I work with a lot of volunteers. I'm a volunteer in some, some, some actions. Hmm. Okay. Exploitation, I think uh, we we okay. I think we've been through this also. Well, you have here uh, something that I use, okay? Dissemination is information and exploitation is transformation. But um, dissemination is a marketing plan. Maybe, I mean, you know, uh, I'm, uh, I'm in giving this information according also to my perception of uh, and my background on project management, not only in Europe. But uh, these are indications. These are in suggestions. And the expectation is a business plan. OK? Everybody uh, familiar with business plan? A business plan? Yes. The marketing that you put out, the marketing plan, can it be very aggressive? Should it be a tranquil marketing plan? Uh, should it be hardcore? Uh, well, uh, I would say first that, uh, sorry, did you finish your question first? My no, no, it's, it's okay. okay. Uh, well, this is a bit uh, sensitive and it's, uh, it depends on your way of... Uh, I have to say that I always uh, have the uh, opinion of the marketeer itself. I, I never, I've never been uh, too aggressive on, on what's aggressivity. Like, for example, uh, spam is aggressive, ag uh, aggressive uh, phishing and all that stuff. But um, I think you just, you just need to find your right uh, canal, the, the right uh, broad broadcast system. You have to be also aware about how the uh, information is uh, transmitted with your, your, uh, within your partnership. It's, it's all about the question of people. Sometimes you have a very good marketing plan and uh, you remember the publicity on the, the European Commission um, created a video to promote uh, engineering uh, and, 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 and women. Did you remember this polemic? No? Okay, this video was about, because there is a big lack of um, women in engineering. 
So uh, the <laughs> smart guys at the European U Union designed a video highly, highly stereotyping. I mean, you had these engineers with high heels and baton and all that stuff. I mean, come on, this is ridiculous. So this was a big, big chaos, big mess. And it was uh, out of the uh, main broadcast. So you have to really think about what you're doing. So it's difficult to answer. I, I wouldn't say that, I would say that it shouldn't be aggressive. It should be, uh, it should be um, uh, um, suggestive. useful, fruitful. Um, suggestive marketing, not, not suggestive marketing, not... For example, yeah. yeah. You remember the guerrilla marketing this, uh, this time? Guerrilla? Was uh, different techniques used. Yeah, suggestive. If you have a good project, a good uh, solution for some situation, it will be very easy to, to market. Have to be uh, useful. So a good business plan uh, will lead you onto a, a proper marketing plan, basically. Yeah, I would say. Depending so. on the product. Depend also on the product. Um, what what for sure? By plan, I mean I mean plant. You have to plan your marketing. You not you don't write well. We will have a newsletter. We will have this, we will have that. No. What are you going to do exactly during the project, after, before? Uh, sustainability. What is a sustainable project? That's, I, I wanted to use this because I <laughs> there's a funny thing here. What is a sustainable project, okay? Well, you have your uh, initi initiating phase, you have this babene, uh, do you want, do you guys want to share? They are, they are very, pro they are very proactive in Synergia. And, and these two ones particularly. Um, okay, you have someone, um, thinking of the project. I'm using this example be because uh, I think the, uh, the, the, the sector I'm, I'm referring here is one of the most uh, uh, worry about uh, sustainable uh, projects. She's thinking, she's thinking, and she come up with a very uh, bright idea, which is the prototype of Fila. P-H-Y-L-L-A. It's a Fiat prototype from 2008. It's a city car, electrical city car. But at this point, she's also thinking, well, what after that? Let's recycle then the car and the bicycles. And if, if she's a good thinker, engineer, engineer or whatever, she will even think about a last life of this bicycle. This is sustainability, or better say, it's part of sustainability. And the concept here, if you think about what you're doing in a different process life, uh, cycle lives, okay? This kind of, this is a concept. In this case, I wanted to use an image for you to understand that from the thinking until the uh, final product, the possibility to, to reuse. It's a yeah, it's a kind of spin-off, we can say that. Okay? So I remember when I was uh, in Canada, we had the, we, the, there was this big engineering company and I uh, suggested with the two other guys to create a spin-off of a company uh, which would, uh, which would uh, specialize in uh, sustainability. And, and um, the, the idea was from, from idea, the, the marketing message was from idea to final product. Okay, so it's a kind of a cycle. This is a sustainability explained as a concept. Don't look at the chairs and the cars, but it's a concept, okay? okay. So how it works with your project? In what way your project is sustainable? Well, 
For example, the, the span, the, the, the life cycle of the project have a sequel, for example. Okay? I'm, I'm preparing right now a, a small project which is planned for uh, six years because we, we are planning to, to do some things as a beginning and then there is another uh, sequence. We don't know exactly. We know that we are going to apply on the Leonardo da Vinci partnership but we don't know how we are going to, but even the, the program will change next year, so we, we don't, uh, after next year, so we don't know exactly how it will works, work, but uh, at the beginning, uh, in, in this moment, the Leonardo da Vinci uh, program is designed with, uh, for example, small actions, and then there is another action called development of innovation, which is the creation of some innovative product concept, and then after that, you can even apply two years after that, four years after that, to a Leonardo transfer of innovation, which means that you will take what you've been developing and you will transfer it in other countries, in other concepts, in other organizations. So you, okay, this is sustainability. Span life includes, and that's my development work package. Again, this is me. There are different ways of, believe me, of uh, addressing sustainability. Sustainability means also the mainstream, which is the way you are going to webcast, uh, to uh, broadcast, uh, to, uh, to get to your final um, uh, listener. Or, uh, okay, this is uh, also part of sustainability. If, that's why I refer the marketing plan, because if you don't know how you are going to impact people who's going to receive uh, information, it's, I mean, you, ha you have to be able to make these people react. Hey, I, this is very interesting for me. So the mainstream, the multiplication effect, we've been talking about that, which, which means the people that uh, it's their job to, to, to do uh, training, for example, to train. If you only have uh, um, uh, scholars, you know, researchers, researchers, they don't train. They might be interesting, in, interested in your project, but they don't train, they don't... Researchers, generally, they don't say anything to nobody. Okay? It's not really true, but... Uh... Um, so, you have also inclusiveness. You engage the maximum stakeholders uh, possible. Stakeholders, you remember? Uh, business activities, you can, you can think about creating a business from a project after that, not in the, in the duration of the project. Um, I'm just uh, uh, looking at uh, some, some notes, I took a lot of notes. The two steps, during and after. Whatever you plan, you have uh, something else going uh, to happen, will, will happen after that. And the structured network momentum. Okay, during the project, you're networking, you're doing your actions, and you, you build. Okay? I started uh, working on uh, anticipating skills uh, topic in order to answer to uh, uh, job uh, mismatch, job uh, gaps, jobs obsolescence, competence obsolescence. I started it in June with the group, okay? In August, I applied for two projects as a partner, small skills partner, uh, to, for skill and skills anticipation. In September, I was in Turin with an expert group to listen to them, okay? and to, to collaborate. And today, I'm in a group uh, with a web platform working on this anticipating, anticipation skills. And in the 7th of this, uh, December, I'll be in Brussels with a very uh, important event at top level to, to be part of these activities. Okay? This is structured network. So, I'll be able to disseminate and to actively work in Portugal and within the partners I'm working with on this topic, trying to 
give uh, recommendations, trying also to understand good practices to be applied in Portugal, etc. I'll be actively doing something, not just listening. Yeah. Bruno, sorry about all the questions. Uh, if I apply for two grants, one's got nothing to do with the other. Well, one's, one is not... One's got nothing to do with the other. Yeah, yeah. So it's two different, two different companies, sure. for example. Will my grant be given on both in some way, or will one affect the other and not give me the grant on the other? Well, uh I don't have a specific uh, answer, but I would say definitely there will be a connection somehow. First of all, it depends if, one, if the two projects are centralized or the two projects project are uh, decentralized, or one is centralized, the other is decentralized. They, but, they two completely different entities. But um, if, the, if there are two different organizations, if the two frameworks are different, I mean, but you see, for example, in Portugal, I can, I, can, I can be the coordinator of millions of projects if, if they are all different. But this is not sustainable. I mean, I can't be, uh, I'm not uh, omniscient. I can't be, uh, I don't have this. It should allow you to provide specific information related to the action. Action means, you remember structure, category, Subprogram action. Action means the final, final, final program you're working with. Grundvig multilateral project. So it means uh, it means uh, You must remember this. Uh, you remember this document? Document. This. Okay. This is the guide, uh, the user manual guide, part two B. And when you, when you read here, action, did you notice that action is with a capital A? It's like, hey, guys, okay? It's another help. It, it's this. Okay, program, subprogram, action, category, action. Green Vigna. So if, you, if you're addressing, if you're completing this part, with these 3,000 characters, well, you'll be sure that you've been talking about, you, we've been through that, the four, the four main, the four main uh, uh, priorities, improving the content, improving adult education system policies, and the fourth one here, improving the management, you remember that? With sub, subtopics, sub-operational objectives, this is the information. At this point, you will, you will, uh, um, but this is a bit, sen yeah. Do we have to refer to one of them or? Haha, -ha, that's what I wanted to say. You're not going to write, uh, you're not going to copy paste what you've been reading in the PDF uh, action that they did. Our project, uh, and you start the sentence, which is the sentence of this PDF application for, um, indicate user. You're not doing that. What you're going to do is to explain what your project is about using the uh, aim, using the strategy, using the target group and all that stuff. And what you're saying fits the definition of, uh, of the action. It fits. Okay. I will uh, cook uh, basmati rice. It fits with the topic of the project, which is which is cooking Indian food. Indian food. If the topic of the project is uh, to cook uh, Indian food and I cook spaghetti, I don't fit. 
but I use spaghetti, I didn't use uh, Indian food. You understand the, the difference? You don't use the sentences that are there, you don't copy paste because it makes no sense. You will explain what your project is about by fitting, because it fits, not by fitting, because it fits, because it's addressed adult education, because it addressed one of these topics, one of these, um, what they called, one of these program specific information. And by the way, remember that uh, when you look at this uh, PDF uh, form, which is the action, you also have information, uh, as I told you, in all the documentations, in the new skills for new job thing, you have flagships, uh, you have, you know, you use that. And again, you didn't design a project according to what Mr. Barroso tells you to do. But be sure that you fit. Because if you're addressing uh, young people uh, which have problems at school and they are in the, you know, the, the, the jail for youngs, you're out of your, uh, pro, uh, out of your um, subject here, okay? And, and believe it, believe, believe me, it's, it, it happens, okay? It's not bulletproof. Uh, well, you have this, this specific uh, things for Erasmus that you have nothing to care about. And let's have um, a, a quick look. Okay, matching the project with the action program. Mention general objectives. I think this is my way of writing the projects. I always go global to narrow. But sometimes global is narrow and I get narrower. Okay, it depends where you are. Uh, you mentioned specific general objectives, specific objectives. Uh, there is uh, something here that is uh, associated with uh, some, some, some countries, in some countries, the national agency, the, the agencies that uh, deal, which is the operational uh, arm of the um, Euro Commission, or, I mean, with the, the LLP program, this organization is also the national agency of the program. So if you have this organization in your partnership, you have to be careful about the links. There is information there for you to use. Arrivederci. Grazie. Um, sometimes people get out also. Yeah, you. So if one organization of your partnership is also a representative of the national agency, is the national agency in the country for LLP program, you have to be careful at that point, you have to, to put it in this F uh, box. You have to mention it, to state it. And, <clears throat> sorry, and you will see that they also ask you to put a statement written by this organization about the fact. This is an um, administrative uh, thing. Um, refer, you can refer here also to precise EU global policy, such as, for example, e ET2020, EU2020, new skills for new jobs, the Copenhagen process, there's so many. Okay, be specific. Uh, so you have the LLP policy, the Grundvig policies. There is a Grundvig uh, work team. You will, if you Google it, you will find it. Uh, um, producing uh, information and recommendations. And you have also, also the uh, Grundvig multilateral project policies, okay? For example, the two main objectives of the Grundvig multilateral project policy, you already know that, which is giving opportunity to the aging population and learning uh, aspects, and also tackling the um, learning uh, path, pathway, the way of you, you learning, okay? For example, in this case, a non-formal, informal methods. Um, applicable uh, EU policies and settings are uh, EU 2020, new skills for new jobs. LLP policy are, for example, the Copenhagen process. 
uh, Bruch Communique, the Grundvig, Grundvig, the program policies uh, are uh, linked to, for example, you have this uh, in your, um, in the platform. There is a booklet, a PDF booklet made of uh, Grundvig su success st stories, project that have been very successful in um, reaching the objectives in, okay? So you can use that for your, your project. And on the multilateral, well, you have the, essentially the, the guides. What else? Just, just to come back to the... Um, just to come back to this part, careful with the national agency link. You will see, you will look at uh, the uh, instruction for applicant page uh, 53 and and there you have the explanation uh, that if you have an organization in your partnership in your consortium that is also a national agency in the country then you will have a statement from that that there is no managerial link uh, to avoid conflict conflict of interest and double funding this is quite technical you will you will I think uh, some organization, for example, HDRC in Greece is the national agency of uh, Macedonia or something, for example. Well, do you understand this, this concept? If one organization, no? Okay. Um, you are in the project, you are P1, and there is P2. Forget about this explanation, okay? I'm just trying to be sustainable. Yeah. Then after that, we take the paper and make a bunch fire. Maybe not here. And P3 is your Greek partner. Just for you to know now, now Greece is, uh, we, they use Elas, not, not Greek. So. The short, the short, the code for, for Greece now is uh, EL. Um, and this Greek partner in your partnership is also the national agency of one country which is not part of the uh, European Union. Or is the national agency for the LLP program of one country which is part of the European Union but don't have, the, don't have the structure to have their own national agency in their own country. So, in, if, if this happens, you must have uh, some uh, technical uh, things to be done, uh, administrative uh, situation to be done, such as a statement. I don't have experience, and it never happened until now, but uh, there must be a statement from there that they are not associated to the management of the project or some, some, some situation with the man, man, managerial uh, activity. And this is to avoid the conflict of interest of, of fundings. I don't have experience specifically, but it's there. So if it happens and you have a doubt, again, the help desk. I would do that if, it's, if it happens to me uh, on one project. Okay, so we've been through that. Any question? Any anything? I wanted to go back to the uh, E and F. This is important. Okay, so we. Either we, we can have a short break, it's an hour and a half also already, a short break now. Yes, we will have a short break now. Believe me, I can see you. <laughs> You're not saying anything, but you, some, some of you are doing this, some of you are... Some, depends on the level of... Uh, okay, and then we start... Um, we'll start uh, these suggestions that you mentioned yesterday. Okay?
to have? New slides, new PowerPoint presentations. No. Yeah, okay. actually it's uh, prepared. I have to upload them. Ah, okay. Okay? okay. So I'll do it uh, maximum before Sunday. It will be there. Okay. And also new documents that I found that I think we would be... Um, Okay, shall we start? Yes. Now, we are, uh, we are um, starting using these uh, ideas that you suggested yesterday, which is, um, let's start with this uh, first one, beneficiaries, which companies, with etc. Well, when you look at the um, uh, guide, you read any organization in the field of adult learning, any organization, whether formal, non-formal, or informal. You remember the formal, informal, non-formal concepts? Yes? What we've been, the activity we've been doing the second day together, it's a non-formal because it's structured in group, in things. You, you can't, uh, the group can talk, only the spokesperson, even if it didn't happen really that way, but it's structured, but it's non-formal. Informal can be a movie, watching a movie and debating the movie. And formal is a structured, uh, uh, setting within a school, within a private or public school, higher education, secondary school, this is formal. So, uh, you have uh, the, de the clear definition of, um, of what are these organizations. Can be a private company, it can be a public company, semi-public. It can be a non-profit, profit. It can be, when, we, when I say public, you know, local authorities. Um, higher education institution carrying out research. Okay. So uh, it's quite wide. And even here you have, for example, European umbrella organization in the adult education field. You have a very well-known European umbrella uh, organization, with which, which is, for example, the North South Center Association, which is part of the Council of Europe organization. The Council of Europe is not a European body, it's an organization of uh, 47 countries in Europe. But the Council of Europe work closely with the European Union and may, maybe uh, more particularly with some part of the Directorate General, General of the, Council, the European Union, such as for example the cooperation uh, DG, the education DG, and all that stuff. So this is a European umbrella. The CEDEFOP is not. Uh, it's a, the CEDEFOP is a, is a, let's say part of a European umbrella organization, but it's also a, a part of the LLP program. It's the operational operational arm of the uh, development of uh, vocational education of the LP program. 
C'est des FOP. This is a, you remember when I put the names of the organization that are very important to consider and all that stuff, it will be available anyway in the, in the, so maybe you have some question here at this point on the beneficiary who can apply. This is the who can apply or which organization can apply. Synergia can apply. Synergia is a very good organization to apply to Grundvig multilateral project. Yeah. At some point, I have to ask you, I'm sorry, because I'm very, uh, it's a very bad manner, but I don't remember your name. Uh, Marcello. Marcello. Um, Bruno, just a question. I was a bit confused the other day while I was on live streaming. Um, I'm working for an organization which is a cooperative. So we have many partners. Yeah. And each partner is specialized in a certain field. Do we um, have to, uh, as in partner one, partner two, partner three, as a, 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 a single entity, or is it still part of the cooperative? Because the, the people that are working for us are on a freelance basis, but they do get a, a pay slip. So they do pay uh, taxes, but they're not physically employed by us on a permanent basis. Do we still um, put them down as partners? Well, that would be, that would be uh, anyway to maybe shoot, yeah? Grazie. The partner is the, your cooperative and uh, your, uh, you, the members or the experts, uh, with a regular contact for the duration of the project, Coco are, mem are staff members of the, the cooperative. The partners are uh, organizations with, with the legal status, cooperatives, associations, uh, public authorities, uh, not, not experts. Uh, again, again, at any point, any, any, anything, you, you, the golden rules, okay? what I call the golden, golden rules. Which is uh, the organization that is applying or partner is a leg have a legal status. The staff involved have a legal status with this organization and not another one. Uh, all, all, all aspects linked to the organization applying or partnership have to be, uh, have to uh, abide, uh, obey, follow the golden rules. So for example, if uh, m m the, the, the NGO that I founded uh, this year is a cooperative of entities, these entities can apply uh, in, as a single uh, part uh, organization and this entity can apply as a single organization it's made of but if I got here Mr. Uh, Marcus who is a staff of entity one but he's not staff of of this organization he is not eligible okay so here we have a st F staff, it's official, and each staff of this organization have its own staff. So be sure that if you apply with your cooper uh, cooperative of entities, be sure that everything is from here, not... You know this guy? I uh, know him, but uh, he's president. And uh, is uh, like uh, the consortium in which uh, our uh, organization and your organization are in. So, part of uh, applicant is uh, like uh, our consortium, and the other partners are our cooperatives. But uh, the staff of uh, your cooperative isn't the staff of the consortium. Also, uh, well, we have to, we have always to remember when we're looking at the information and we have a doubt because each country, is, for example, in Italy, cooperatives are very strongly um, 
the definition of cooperatives in, in, in Italy, I remember from my last visit here, uh, is very clear. But in some countries it's not so clear. For example, what is a non-governmental organization? Good luck. It depends. Is it because you don't receive money from the government? Is it because you don't have a staff is, which, which is also a parliamentary? But there is different definitions. Basically, it would mean that uh, whatever you do, you don't follow the, what they say at the political level. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Well, anyway, always check. Always be sure that, etc. Um, is that okay for this part? You mentioned that. You mentioned this. Um... Also, obviously, according to the type of organization you have or you are part of, you will not be able. Uh, you will not be eligible in all uh, programs. What I mean is, here, for example, Grundvig is a very wide, very wide um, framework for beneficiaries. But for example, Cominius, uh, it's a bit more narrow. Cominius is for secondary, uh, secondary schools. There are some, some programs also only for higher education. If you apply for Erasmus, well, either you are or you're not. Here in Grundvig, it's wider. OK? Oui? Is there a minimum of uh, staff that should be working in the organization? I mean, um, this should be a big organization or a small, it, there's no difference? Well, um, this is, this is uh, there's no straight answer. It's all a, a question of, uh, um, how, how would you say that, of uh, rational, of, uh, um, making sense. If, if for example, you, you are in one organization with two people, okay? Two people, and in, in the project, you are responsible for the management of the project, and for that, you will receive 50% of the budget. I'm not sure. Uh, unless it's some kind of a big... I mean, it's, it doesn't really make sense. Uh, my experience on Grundvig multilateral project, generally there are four, three, four staff as key um, um, actively engage in the project. Remember that it's a two-year project and that, uh, for example, just for the management and for the management, the, the, in this example that I use, plan, the manager, uh, the management team have 54, 48 days. 48 days in two years, not much. So, it's a question of making sense. When you're working with reality, when you preparing real activities. It makes sense that um, if you are going to manage a project of two years, you will have at least one person responsible and one person co-responsible of the management and maybe one uh, third person uh, at some point uh, helping also. So maybe three people will be engaged as partner one in work package one. And maybe your company have three people it's okay, makes sense, three people, okay? Now, um, also the contrary, I guess, could happen, because remember, you, do, you have no limitation in quantity of staff and no limitation in quantity of information of each staff. So, okay, if you have the work package one, you have a six, 54 days, and your company have a, a 1,500 people and you want to put in the work package one key staff 20 people I mean you're exaggerating a bit I think 
20 people, maybe it's too much. So it's a question of uh, balance of, uh, it's a bit difficult to answer, I'm trying to, um, I wouldn't put 20 people for uh, the partner one as a, as a responsible of uh, work package one. This is too much. Also, you have the indirect costs, remember? You have people involved in the project which are not uh, key staff, but you will work with them. They will be uh, engaged in the project and they will have some eligible costs that you will, pre uh, you will uh, plan to, to put on other costs. So, remember, huh? when you're using the staff table, and you're putting the, the days of the staff table, it's the days that are actually going to happen on the staff, key staff that you put on the work package one. But it, it means, it doesn't mean that you have nobody else engaged in your activity. You might have, uh, what I mean is you can have, okay, you are at C1, your organization, description and you are then at C2 and you put three key staff but maybe you have these three key staff they will be working also with three other staff so you have the other cost table uh, tab, and it means that other people will also be involved in the work package but they're not considered key staff, okay? If it's a technical project, maybe you need more staff to manage, but since you need, to, you need the money to other things, you can put all the money on the staff, so, uh, well, you, you design your budget uh, according to, to the, the needs. Does it answer to... Yeah, completely. I started with a, a small organization of two people on the Leonardo da Vinci partnership. We won the, as a partner, we won the project, we knew, and now we are uh, applicants. And we are bigger, we are eight now. Even so big, we created a specific company to, to that. So, it's possible. I even believe that uh, it's possible to have uh, one per person in a partnership in a smaller scale uh, project. It, it, uh, it's all a question of make sense. Uh, I'll keep that open just in case. Okay, um, on this part here, I don't remember who, uh, I think it's you, the, the idea, oh it's you, sorry, you know this uh, one and this three, the work plan could be um, another one. Another one, I'd like, to see, I'd like to know if it's possible to apply to more than one, uh, uh, with more than one project or is there a limit for the, the, the apply a person or a company can do, or a society can yeah, do? Yeah, there are limitations. In, um, in, in I, I, can, I can say, uh, well, let's, let's uh, keep, uh, keep it Grunvig multilateral. You, 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 your organization can apply to one, you remember the slide, one project, one, one organization. So, uh, your organization apply for a Grunvig multilateral project. That's it. You can apply with the same organization another Grunvig multilateral project. It's not allowed. But you can apply with another organization with the same program. And you can also be coordinator of this uh, project. Okay? In this case, uh, I hope uh, one project with uh, Italian partner, our Italian partner will go on, but I'm also planning to work in another Grunvig multilateral uh, project as coordinator. Or maybe not uh, coordinator. It, it will depend because 
uh, when you have your project approved and you have uh, you already have you always have the the, the second uh, the, the plan B. So according to also what happened on the selection, uh, well, if you're lucky enough, for example, this year, uh, same company won two big projects under Grundvig Multilateral and under Leonardo da Vinci uh, DOI. Those, those projects are uh, medium-scale projects. The same company won two big projects, and it was the same coordinator. So it's a proof that uh, it's happened. It happens. It's difficult, it's difficult to work with this project. Obviously. That's why if the two projects are approved, uh, well, you will think about it. And you can explain. Well, you know, uh, a company is like a, a person. It evolves, it changes, it's... Well, you don't change a uh, topic, uh, you start something one day and then the day after you change completely what you're doing in the company, but it changes and it adapts. So again, don't be afraid to tell the truth, to say, okay, that's it, that's the situation. We, we, to ensure, to guarantee the success of the project, we have to change this and that. Make it rational, make it uh, true, be true, be honest, tell the truth. There's no problem in... in the, the situation here is uh, sometimes you make a mistake where I'll, you can't change the situation. Well, it's a mistake and okay, it's, you have to assume. But sometimes you make a mistake and it's okay. I mean, project management. <laughs> allora, so many things can happen. So don't, don't uh, hesitate to explain what's uh, going on. I don't rec recommend to be coordinator in uh, more than two big scale projects. Because even if, if in the project one you have 20 days that you will have to, to manage uh, this situation or the other, and the other project you have 20 days, I mean 40 days in two, two years, which will probably be more than 40 days, but um, I mean it's not a big deal. Okay? For example, on smaller, smaller scales project, small scales, ah, it depends also on the eligibility of uh, the situation. For example, there's a small scales project, very interesting to look at, which are what we call learning partnerships. You have learning partnerships under Grundvig and learning partnerships under Leonardo. Okay, this year uh, I applied for three Leonardo da Vinci partnership, which are uh, linked to mobilities, lump sum, each project will receive uh, an amount of, of money. Uh, the maximum is 16,000. And I, I was coordinator in each project with a different organization, and they're all approved. But, and it's, a, it's basically working and transnational meeting every two or three months. It's not a big deal for me. And also, I don't need to go in all transnational meetings. I, I, this is the, I did this project for my colleagues to also engage. So it's a small scale project. So it's all a question of uh, make sense. But for sure, you cannot apply with the same organization twice in the same action. So. Is that, uh, so please uh, take the micro and tell us uh, what you have in mind, the ideas, how to, to organize. This is, you have this uh, detail here, for example. You said good practices, right? If I'm not wrong, it's written right 
the, exactly this, the, the, the way you've been uh, saying that, you see? For example, uh, comparative analysis of policies initiatives. This is not good practices, but you can, you can build projects which are going to compare uh, good practices, compare results, and you will try to m make it uh, useful as a Euro European uh, level. So you can, but um, doing that, you, you doing that, it, it depends on the outcome that you will be. Um, uh, what you have to, you have to produce something in a, a, any kind of program that will be um, innovative and that will give and result in a change of a situation. So. But it could be innovative for uh, the other countries, and for example, is uh, the, the the coordinator or, or one of the partner uh, um, uh, the, the organization who uh, can uh, disseminate an innovation uh, to the other partners, for example. If uh, I have an organization which has uh, uh, an innovative method uh, of training for uh, a specific groups of uh, a group of learners, or um, specific uh, tools uh, of uh, training, uh, could I apply for uh, this? Um, develop a project in which uh, I, my organization bring uh, this method to other countries. Yeah, you can, and you can even you can even do it. This is one of the focus of a Grundvig multilateral project, for example. Within the project, you build. This is one thing you can do. There's many things, as you can see. There's one thing that you can um, bring to with a good practice somewhere is this this Grundvig um, training courses within the project you build uh, one week training courses and these training courses will be uh, used as um, in-service training it's called IST, in-service training courses which will be part of a catalog and a web platform so you, you can build this IST in your country and people will, uh, will be able to okay, PIA uh, and Synergia will, will develop a uh, training course for adult, blah, 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 all e eligible. And uh, they decided uh, in the, during the project to build, to create this course and to pilot test it and all that stuff and to build it in Italy. So people will come from abroad or from Italy and assist this training course. But also they uh, they can use this uh, IST Grundvig course for other partners of the project to do in their country. In this moment, for example, I'm preparing, well, not me directly, but uh, Horizon is preparing an IST Grundvig uh, implementation in Portugal based on the work of a Belgian partner. It's not even... Uh, uh, during, uh, it's not uh, within the uh, Grundvig multilateral partnership, but it's, it, was b it was in the learning, in the Renew project, I've been participating. We've been structure, structuring networking, and they say, hey, we would like to do this in Portugal. So, you see? So you can do it, yes. This is eligible. Uh, let me see, there is something I remember that's This, this uh, little, this information here is what they call the objectives and the actions. It's obvious that it's, in, it's impossible to, I mean, it would be uh, 20 pages to, to give you. But I think that, okay, you have a project idea, for example. You want to develop this and that. First, you, you have a, a first glance of matching 
Well, it's a bit more complex than that, but because there are many actions, you don't. So you you will have you must have an idea of this before uh, matching your idea. So you you have a clear idea what is Comenius, what is uh, Grundvig, what is Leonardo, because you've been reading the, for example, the part two A. And you will uh, understand at that point. Okay, my my project address adult our adults. So I'm not Comenius, I'm not uh, Erasmus. I might be uh, Leonardo and Grunvig, but I'm not sure yet. So you go deeper, you, you learn about Leonardo, you learn about Grunvig, and you can understand that Leonardo is more for vocational education people. Yeah, but you're, you're in adult, so you're in Grunvig. Then when you're in Grunvig, you know that there is, I think, 10 actions. And these 10 actions, you go through them, and you see that, well, uh, IST is just making a course of one week for that, so it's not my project. And you will, uh, little by little, you will come to the, okay, either I can apply on a multilateral network or a multilateral project, or I can do a learning partnership. So that, at that point, you have a clear idea. When you are in the three or two or three actions, sorry, that you feel because it's match, it match uh, your project, then you go through the details. And after that, you go, for example, to EVE platforms and you check, okay, if it's a Grunvig multilateral, you check the examples of projects. See? So by doing this uh, back and forth, back and forth, you will start reaching the uh, point and you will know and you have a consult consultant, you can, you can do many things to be sure that... Uh, for example, when I started uh, designing this project, I was a bit... Uh, I wasn't sure, and I started using my network, and I met this guy from uh, Austria, <laughs> from Innsbruck, and uh, I sent him my project idea. And he helped me. Oh this is very interesting, you should uh, develop a curricula under Leonardo da Vinci partnership, which I did. Okay? Also, what I mean is he uh, confirmed, he gave me a, a solid uh, okay by choosing this field. And also, well, when you it depend on what which level you are, I mean, I was starting. Uh, I wouldn't uh, engage on the multilateral as a starter, even if I have uh, experience. I would try to start easy, more or less. And then, okay. Sometimes we have very good project ideas, but uh, it's better to start low or to co to cooperate with someone who have a, a good structure and experience. Salute. Okay. You send it to me. You send it to. I can send it to some people. I would like to synergia to know. I'll be so glad to come back and to support and uh, yeah, you, 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 I think, I think it's, um, it's uh, very important to have the opinion of the others and different opinions, opinion from people from Finland, opinion from people from, uh, I think it's very important. I, I wouldn't do anything, be, well, I have a 90% uh, solid uh, cohesion of my project, I know, then I use 10% to check. As I said, when I was here on a preparatory visit, um, I learned very fast that there are some countries which is better to apply in, instead of Portugal, for example. So if you have a strong partner, you organize your things according to that. Yes? Um, and also, uh, I, I said that Google is a superhero. It's a very good help, believe me. If you know how to use Google, 
it's fantastic. Okay, so um, I don't know if you would like to, to talk more about this part, these uh, ideas matching things, no? We can maybe, uh, we, can, we can start. We can look at this. How to build the work packages. Because we have, um, what I propose, if you agree, we have 25 minutes to 12 where we can talk about that, and at uh, 12, uh, we can have an activity, either in groups or all together. So, let's go to an activity to wake up. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Um, Well, if you, if you agree, what we can do, hello, I am not living only with words, I've been writing the words, you know the 50 words? Uh, not bad. Uchita, ingreso. I have my 50 words, I think. Uh, insalata, insalata rosa, bianca, più tardo. Ah, this one is very inter interesting. This morning at the, uh, in the breakfast, basta, ah, basta, ah, basta. But I will also bring with me some gestures. Ah, ah. Ah. Okay. Uh, this exercise basically is, um, uh, we can do it all together, but I think it would be more interesting in groups. You choose a topic, and we will work on defining the aim, the strategy, and the target group. It's, it's the uh, part B2 of the, uh, of the uh, application, the um, Adobe Acrobat application form, the, the abstract, B1, abstract, okay, in uh, 2,000 characters, if I'm not wrong, you should be able to explain what it is about, what is your project is about. So in one, two, maybe three paragraphs, aim, strategy, target group, Someone who will read that will understand perfectly in very fast uh, uh, fashion what it is all about, okay? So since you, are, um, you have different ideas, we can, we can start the exercise by grouping you. So we don't have tables, so what I, what I will do is uh, I'll separate you again and uh, you will work in group in order to... Do you understand the uh, purpose of the exercise? You will choose a subject, a topic, and from the topic you will start uh, conceiving and writing the... Um, maybe I should be more specific, you're right.
That's what I'm talking about. So it's basically brainstorming together, teamwork. I want this topic. No, I want this one. OK? So I try to do different. Gepetto, Pinocchio. You don't want two working groups. You prefer to work all together. It's a bit more difficult. Oh, OK. Why not an open space method? Yeah, interesting. There is another method, which is not Gepetto, blah, 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 blah. And this is uh, called open space. Well, it will not be exactly open space because we don't have the uh, structure, but uh, you start by choosing topics. OK? You can maybe write here. We should use a board and all that stuff, but you choose topics. And uh, people who will um, feel OK to address this topic with you uh, join you. So groups are being formed by topics and by person willing to start um, working on these topics. So if, for example, uh, Pia wants to talk about one thing, you all go with her or her or him. So maybe let's put the topics here. I'm sorry, so many names in so many, so few days. You are Katarina, because uh, another person called you by your family name, uh, Vrnsk. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you're Katarina. Kati, okay. Okay. Kathy, like this? She's being very specific. Uh, so what would be your subject? But let's, uh, let's migration is still quite big. Migrants. OK, migrants. I'll explain to you how, to, how it works uh, after that. Uh, Pia, you would like to know? Yeah, Cinzia? Everybody's migrant. <laughs> Someone would like to have a group. Someone have an idea and would like to have a group to help develop this idea. Marcello. Yes. Marcello. Yes. It's Interesting. I'm in your group. Intercultural mediation. Okay, we have. Uh, you have a team of three. Yeah, you have an idea, or you have a. Tell me your name. Gennaro or Rino. Gennaro. Rino. 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 Uh, ambiente. Politiche ambientali. How do you spell? Uh, Not everybody at the same time. My Italian is already a bit. Uh, uh, just how do you spell your name? Uh, Gennaro. Gennaro. Rio. Rio. Yeah. Oh. So uh, environmental uh, policies, is it? Maybe we can have another group, four groups. I don't interested in agriculture, if possible. Agriculture? In this speech. And you are French? No, you're not Francesca. No, I'm not French. Alessandra. Ah, Alessandra. I'm going to write it like that, if you, it's OK for you, Alex. That's right. That's right. <clears throat>
Looking forward at the future of uh, European policy, so the agriculture would be uh, you, you one of the most uh, important... Today it's only 35% of the total package, but uh, at one point 70% 70, 70 of the total budget the European Union went to the PAC, and French were very... Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, okay, this is uh, something more? Okay. Ah, okay. Upcycling. This is the second phase, third phase of uh, recycling. Okay. You can choose with Marcello. So, so someone, someone else would like to engage? Yes? Your, remember your name? Michela. Michela. I'm not going to put Mike. Mi Michela? Like this? No. Claro, uh, Italiano e mi, mi, Michele. Michele Michela. And what's your place and the time they want to start talking about the topic? And they will be on the table. For example, if I have a topic to say, I would wait here in my place and people will gather. So there are some rules. Uh, I'm going to be quick not to go to the details, but for example, you're in a group. You selected a group, but it doesn't please you anymore. You change group. Well, the, the, the guy who started the topic <laughs> would stay, but... Oh. So, you, you can change, change group. It's the law of the two feet. You use your feet and you go. Whenever you arrive on the group, it's okay. Even if the group is already debating, it's okay. Whenever you want to leave the group, it's okay. And when it's finished, it's finished. When it starts, it starts. You don't, you don't start alone, but if you have one person already in your group, you start talking, debating, waiting for the others to show up or not. Okay? This is more or less... So it means that when you start in one group, and nobody gets offended for that, and at some point someone doesn't like anymore the uh, way or whatever, they change group. Okay? Or maybe some of you are like me, a butterfly, and they want to change group. Okay? The bees are the ones who, okay, they're working, they, and then the butterfly, sometimes they go to the coffee machine and, hey, what about this topic? Yeah, maybe I go there. What do you think? Have you been there? And sometimes it's a group. That's the open space uh, method. You have, uh, you have some, some papers on this method. This is a non-formal learning methods that you can maybe use someday in your activity. So <clears throat> what you do is uh, you group yourself in uh, places you want. Marcello, if he wants, he can stay there. Maybe one group want to go in a bench outside, but yeah. other rooms. You just gather, okay? People will go with Kathy, Marcello, Reno, or Alex, or Michaela. There is no facilitator in this action, in this movement. So you're free to... And the purpose of, of, of this is the process itself. At the end, no exam, nothing. Just if you agree, at the end, uh, before maybe... Um, I think... Well, it's 45 minutes. It's supposed to be in the afternoon, but... Uh, at, at the end, close to the uh, close to thir to uh, 1 p.m. before, or after lunch, then each uh, each uh, responsible or each one of you that started the conversation can can express uh, the sent in one sentence or in two sentences what it is about. The project is going to, to be. Okay? Fair enough? So it's an hour 
and 20, let's say it's an hour and 10 minutes, or an hour and 20, what, what actually it was a question, would you like to work? It's working, and eh? it's not um, uh, wandering around. It's important for you to be in group and to work together to, s to define a strategy, even if you have time uh, to define some work plans, because all this process will help you to define the sentence. So please, at the end of the exercise, at least uh, most of the, the leaders of the, I the ideas, come here and express yourself on the idea. In a group, you have your group with you, and you express the idea. Do that. So we can do that before. Maybe it's, be it's more interesting after lunch. So you can even have lunch and debate on the idea. This is a big um, change on the open space process. OK, let's go. You're free of um, choosing the place and the uh, people you want to work with. Sorry, I have to go to the school stuff. Everything's okay? I mean, what's going on? We are choosing for the partners. We are choosing. We, we are waiting for the partners, but it seems there's no, no one interested in the cultural history of Europe. This is the first no, no one, no one interested in the cultural history of Europe. This ah, is okay, I understand. Well, that's... Uh, it's a specific topic, I think. When in this method, uh, what can happen is uh, eventually if no one is interested in the one topic, these people will join maybe a group to yes, no, participate. No, no. That's what happens. I, yeah, I was saying that uh, if, uh, and there's no problem about that, if your topic interests no one, it's okay. But uh, then you can decide to be part of another group, to, to take uh, advantage of the, the way a process of structuring. It would not be the topic, but for sure, you will be engaged on, for example, defining the situation, working on the work packages. I mean, there is something always fruitful to, to take uh, from uh, any groups, even if it's not your topic.
Perfect. Okay. So, it uh, could be one group. There's no limitation. That's. You can you you should join you should join your own group and and be yeah and I'll be I'll be um, I'll be uh, I'll, I'll be a butterfly between the two groups okay yeah so. Ciao, ciao.